thank you very much. Um, thank you, to everyone, for coming in early, and thank you to the organisers for putting on this uh, this uh, couple of days. Um, as mentioned, my name's Ned. I'm just going to talk to you about uh, E79 gold mines. We have our projects in Western Australia. Here's our standard disclaimer. Um, really, the pillars of the company and moving through to how to be successful really comes from having a good management team um, with a track record of discovery. I'd like to point out um, Deborah Lord on our board uh, won the 2023 Oz IMM President's Award, which is a wonderful accolade for her. Um, apart from good management, you need good ground. We've got uh, about a thousand kilometres of uh, early stage greenfield projects in, in prolific greenstone belts. Once you've got the ground, you need the strategy. The strategy really for us is create new data sets and put your money in the ground, best way to uh, make it a discovery. So just a little bit more on that um, strategy. So what we're looking for when we're um, creating new opportunities is uh, look for a large greenstone belt, preferably a very prolific one, lots of gold, but look for the uh, underexplored parts of this. Try and get a large land holding, get as much of that belt as you can, we uh, like to create our own targets using newer technologies that have come through. Maybe people looked at this uh, 40 years ago and, and the technologies have changed. Use a bit of uh, methodical exploration, test around, but really creating your own data sets, geochemical, geophysical, and then using that to drill. Um, and then of course, as with any strategy, just keep reviewing. There's always opportunities coming up and see which ones fit your strategy and carry on from there. I'll just grab the corporate slide here. You can see our board uh, led by Chris Cairns with uh, Deborah Lord and Peter Ironside on the board as well. I'd just like to point out to, um, there's a couple of things. Let me just see if I can find the pointer. One is our cash position. We're still at $3.3 million, which will fund our exploration going forward. Um, and the other part of it is just these JMEI credits which are available to us. So if we do uh, make a nice discovery, we have the ability to raise money with a benefit to the shareholders through that JMEI credit, or if we see an acquisition that we like, we can use that money again with a direct benefit to the uh, shareholders. Um, as mentioned, we have two large-scale projects in Western Australia. The first one is in the... Uh, is the Laverton South area, oh, it's a bit hard to see there. So this is the Laverton Tectonic Zone and our tenement's in red down here. Um, our second project where we control almost 700 kilometres of ground is up here in the Murchison um, and is our Jungar Flats project. Focusing in on our Laverton South project, you can see on the map shaded in grey running roughly north-south is the Laverton Tectonic Zone. So this is a large-scale, deep-seated shear. This is the shear responsible for all that gold endowment. On the, uh, on the left, you can see uh, a table of all the large deposits, but what's not immediately apparent is that the largest of those are all clustered here, south of the town of Laverton. Um, so the northern and central parts of the Laverton Tectonic Zone, they've had these big discoveries, they're reasonably well explored, um, but the southern part of the zone is underexplored, where E79 is located down in here. So while we say that the southern part of the area is underexplored, it has had recent exploration success. So in the last 10 years, there's been two plus million ounce gold camps discovered. Um, Rebecca sitting here and the Bombora sitting here. So they are now both owned by Romelius Resources who in uh, the last year or two have set about consolidating this area. They can see the value in this area and they're within 20 odd kilometres of most of our tenement package. Um, so it's always nice when you have a, a larger player in your area who who's, sees the value in there. Um, so what we've done, again, following on from our strategy, is um, uh, at the Pingen Ground, which was the northern one in this area, we've done about 350 kilometres of uh, gravity surveys. This is really delineating where the greenstone lives, um, soil sampling, creating the targets, and we've drilled about 50,000 metres of air core drilling. That's uh, primarily been in two areas, uh, target three and target four. 
These areas uh, both sit in prospective geology. They've both got the, the big ticket items that we're looking for. Demagnetised stratigraphy, evidence of large scale fluid flow. Most of the work has been at uh, target three. We've found a lot of smoke. We're still searching for that high grade section, but we've found multiple one gram hits. Um, each time we drill, we're finding higher grades, but we are certainly still searching for uh, the bigger prize in the region. Um, at target four, a little bit to the north, this sits along the Pingen Fault. The Pingen Fault runs for about 30 kilometres. There's uh, historic workings all the way along. Um, there's higher grade open pits in the north, the Patricia open pits. There's uh, more recent uh, open pits in the south. And we sit roughly in the middle. Um, through some of the uh, demagnetised stratigraphy, again, um, a nice geological zone where you'd like to find gold. We've hit 12 metres at 1.12 in the air core drilling. Uh, this is in the weathered rock. This is an in situ uh, anomaly and something that we'll certainly be chasing up. Further to the south is our main exploration area um, of Lake Indana. So this was a big one um, when we listed the company. It's a, it's a first mover opportunity. So what we found is that this area was historically mapped. And what, what we were drawn to as a company was this area was mapped as a granite, which is just less perspective for gold in the Yilgarn Craton. Um, when we looked at the regional magnetics, we started to see a few lineations and a few concepts that it just doesn't, uh, it's not all granite maybe. And this discouraged, sorry, the fact that it was granite discouraged the historic exploration. There was only 65 rab holes and half of those weren't assayed for gold. So what we did is we undertook a um, bit of a review of that early stage drilling. They had hit green stones, but they, again, they didn't assay for gold. So we undertook large scale gravity and found about a 25 kilometre long greenstone belt, pretty much totally underexplored um, within the Laverton Tectonic Zone, one of the world's greatest uh, areas for greenstone gold. So we've, we've created a new search space um, and, and we set about, um, we're currently testing it. Um, so we're about 95% of the way through a 10,000 metre air core program. The gravity picked up not just the green stones, but intrusions within the green stones. So we're testing multiple targets. Um, and there is the obvious uh, gold areas nearby, which we have similar rocks to Rebecca and Bombora. There's also nickel that comes down in this trend. All these get tested for, you know, our company is called E79 Gold Mines, but we do test and explore for everything we can. Um, that air core program should finish up in the next three or four days. Results will start trickling in and we should have news flow probably uh, early 2024. And it's just worth pointing out that when you create one of these new search spaces, um, the largest deposits are generally found first because they have the largest footprints. Our second project in the Murchison Greenstone Belt, another uh, province with about 30 million ounces of gold endowment. Um, we have control about 700 square kilometres of this, but really um, the big deposit in the region for us is the Big Bell deposit, which sits on the Big Bell Shear, which comes all the way up through this tenement package. So we're exposed to about 60 kilometres of this uh, Big Bell Shear. Um, and the, the area has obvious gold endowment, but um, nearby, look, we also have base, base metals. There's a VMS system uh, just to the west. There's lithium potential, there's platinum group, there's iron ore. It really is a bit of a treasure box in this area. So what do we do when we have a long, oops, my apologies, when we have a long elongate uh, greenstone zone? We do our gravity, we find the areas of it, We've done that. We have did about 550 square kilometres of gravity. Um, we identified uh, the greenstone belt going through. It's probably about 15 kilometres of greenstone that was previously unknown, uh, just sitting under cover, but the gravity obviously can see through that cover. We've undertaken a large scale auger program. We've tested about 30 kilometres, so about half of the uh, greenstone has been tested, the other half is uh, awaiting some heritage clearance and then we'll get in and do that other half. But of the half that we have tested, uh, we've found gold anomalism, copper anomalism and also lithium anomalism. 
when we went out to the field to check out these, uh, these zones, we found and mapped a number of lithium-bearing pegmatites, all very early stage um, work, but you know, somewhere around the 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, lithium oxide. So this is low grade, this is early exploration work, um, but their presence and the fact that they're in swarms uh, just bodes well for the area, which we were really there for the gold. So this is just a little add-on that we've been working on recently. Uh, the next stage is we'll drill test these with the gold and the copper and also now with the lithium. Um, so the southern area, I've talked about this a little bit. We, we undertook the, the, sorry, the gravity survey, um, but nearby we also have you know, a 22,000 ounce small gold prospect and that's coming in on an oblique angle to the main um, greenstone belt coming through here. So there's a lot of targets, there's a lot of areas to test and um, a few different, now we know a few different commodities to test for. So um, that's kind of the work that we've been doing going forward. We'll get these uh, air core results. We'll uh, get the northern part of the Murchison ready for drilling. We'll get the southern part of the Murchison ready to create drill targets and we'll carry on drilling and testing and we'll be uh, reviewing lots of different projects in the meantime and see if anything fits our exploration strategy to uh, go forward. That's, uh, that's about it for me. If you have any questions, we're just at a booth uh, next door. Please come and say hello.